I, today we're reading Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37, the most important commandment. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him a question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit an eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Neighbor, Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan, Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, tell him, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor of the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, The one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, Yes, now go and do the same. Well, good morning, guys. Thank you, Abby, for reading the story for us. Um, let's just jump right in and see what it is that God has for us today. So, as you know, our story um, is about, about two things. First of all, there's this question of what the important commandment is. And then, to answer it, Jesus tells the story of the... Uh, Good Samaritan, the parable of the Good Samaritan. So uh, it's all one idea, but they're often broken up in two separate pieces in your Bibles. The most important commandment, um, verse 25, and then the parable of the Good Samaritan, starting in verse 30. So first of all, we need the context, which is telling us, you know, why does Jesus tell this story? Why does Jesus talk about the Good Samaritan? And it's because an expert in religious law was asking Jesus a question. And many, many times, the people who ask these questions are trying to trap Jesus and get him to say something that, that they think is wrong or that they can use against him. Um, but it seems that perhaps in this case, maybe he was asking legitimately. We don't know, but it's a, it's a fairly good question. He says, what, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And then Jesus, like he always does, turns it back on him and says, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? When he says, what does the law of Moses say? He's saying, basically, what does the, the Old Testament, the Bible that you already know, what does that say? And, and when he says, how do you read it? It's not like, do you use your eyes? No, he's saying, like, what does it mean to you? And so the man answers, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, right, do this and you will live. So he's basically saying, you know the answer to this question. It's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Um, I don't know if you noticed, that's pretty hard. Loving the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. That means every time you've sinned, you maybe even just like a, a little thing, you've broken that commandment because you stopped loving God for that that second or minute or day or whatever time you decided that sin was better than God, you stopped loving him. And that, you know, that breaks his heart. And so Jesus says, do that and you will live. And I bet you that this man sort of understands, uh, this is really hard. I don't know if this is possible. So he fires back at Jesus and he says, who is my neighbor? 
He's trying to justify his actions. He's trying to explain, like, I can't do this. I can't love God perfectly and my neighbor the same way that I love myself. So he tries to maybe stump him on a question or at least understand what it means. And he says, who is my neighbor? And Jesus uses this story to explain that it's not about the person who lives next to you. It's about people in general. It's about loving those that God has put in your life. So Jesus tells this story. And you heard it. You, you just heard it. So it's about a man who gets beaten up. He's in the road. Um, and then all these people are coming by. And instead of helping him, they walk around to the other side. And um, it's important because of who walks by. Verse 31 says, By chance a priest came along. But when he saw the man lying there, he crossed the other side of the road and passed him by. Uh, a priest, that's like our pastors. So that'd be like if Jason saw somebody who's beaten up on the side of the road and was like, mm, I got work to do, I gotta get ready for the sermon. And ran to the other side of the road and kept going. If you listen to his sermon later that day, he said, it's really important that we're nice to people. You wouldn't believe him because he didn't do what he said, right? Now, Jason didn't do that, but in this story, we see that somebody who is supposed to be the most religious and the best of all of us isn't loving their neighbor, isn't loving anyone or everyone, right? Same thing, sort of thing happens again. A temple assistant, right? That'd be somebody that works at the church or works at the temple. That'd be like me. I, I'm the temple assistant. I work at the church. If I was to tell you this story and say it's really important that you love everybody and help everybody but when I get done with this video if I were to go walk outside and somebody's lying in my ditch and I'm like Ugh, I'll just take my trash in and ignore that then you you can't trust me because I'm not doing what I'm saying I should do I'm being a hypocrite right so both of these people the temple assistant and the priest are being hypocrites and then it says in verse 33 a despised samaritan came along and when he saw the man he felt compassion for him so a samaritan in this constant uh in this situation context there's the jewish people who thought fairly highly of themselves and then there's the samaritans which are a different group of people a different ethnicity and the jewish people at this time were kind of racist towards them they're like, uh, those people are, you know, we don't want anything to do with them. We don't like them. And so they felt that the Samaritans were beneath them. Um, and so this guy comes along and he sees this poor man, this Jew, one of his enemies, right? And he says, uh, and, and it says he felt compassion for him. And then going over to him, he takes care of him brings him to an inn, pays money for him to be taken care of. He, uh, you know, he does all these things for him that the priest and the temple assistant should have done. And then Jesus asks the question, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the one who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. So if we go back to our first question, that really hurt um, if we go back to our first question, this guy's asking Jesus, you know, what must I do to be saved? Um, and he figures out, you got to love God and you got to love others. And he says, but who, who others am I supposed to love? And he says, basically, everyone. Everyone's your neighbor and you need to go and have mercy or be kind, be merciful to all of them. So what does that mean for us, right? First of all, we can notice that Sometimes reading the Bible can be really confusing. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of things, but we can boil it down to some simpler things. It doesn't mean it's everything, but it's important for us to know that God highly values two things, how we love him and how we love others. So it's very important that we love God and love others. But then secondly, we can learn that when we're talking about loving others, this includes your enemies. This includes people that you don't like. This includes not just the people who are close to you, like, like you might think a neighbor or family. It's way more than that. The Bible says, love your enemies and pray for those who do harm to you. 
So God wants us to be reaching out in love towards everyone, regardless of who they are, regardless of how we feel about them. And when we do that, it's an act of obedience to him because we ultimately love him. Because here's the important part. He came to us when we were enemies of him. He came and took care of us even though we had not done nothing for him. So if God can love us while we're his enemies and can take care of us even though we have nothing good about us, then we can certainly love others even if they're our enemies or we don't like them or anything like that. Because God loved us, we can love others. And by loving others, we're obeying God, which is loving God. So two things, love God, love others. That's what God wants us to do. I'll see you next time.